As this chapter opens, the neighbouring farms, Foxwood, which is owned by Mr Pilkington, and Pinchfield, which is owned by Mr Frederick, spread rumours to help ensure that their own animals don't rise up and take over. They put it about that the animals on Manor Farm were perpetually fighting amongst themselves and were also rapidly starving to death. When time passed and the animals had evidently not starved to death, Frederick and Pilkington changed their tune and began to talk of the terrible wickedness that now flourished on Animal Farm. It was given out that the animals there practised cannibalism, tortured one another with red-hot horseshoes, and had their females in common. This type of propaganda evidently helps to quell the uprisings that are occurring on other farms. During this chapter, Farmer Jones and his men try to take back the farm in what becomes known as the Battle of Cowshed. Snowball and Boxer fight valiantly and are awarded Animal Hero First Class. Now, although this is a short chapter, it features a number of important events, uh, principally the Battle of Cowshed. After the Russian Revolution in 1917, the country experienced a three-year civil war between the Bolsheviks, who led the revolution, and the anti-communist forces that were loyal to the Tsar, which were known as the White Army. The White Army were given technical and monetary support from the United States and Britain. In the novel, the civil war is represented by the Battle of Cowshed. Mr Pilkington, who represents the United States and Britain, sends some of his men to help. The rumours that Pilkington and Frederick spread about what was happening on Animal Farm represent the anti-communist propaganda that was spread by other countries. Films like Make Mine Freedom and The Big Lie are both examples of this type of propaganda. One of the most interesting aspects of this chapter is the way Boxer is characterised. After the Battle of Cowshed, when he believes that he's killed a stable hand, he declares, I've no wish to take a life, not even a human life, repeated Boxer, and his eyes were full of tears. Good-natured and industrious, Boxer is clearly a character that readers are encouraged to identify with. And that's what makes the novel so heartbreaking. By betraying the revolution, the pigs are betraying the loyalty and hard work of characters like Boxer. And once again, we're going to have a little bit of a casual chat about uh, chapter four. This is a really short chapter. Uh, make sure you've got a pen. Make sure you've got a highlighter to highlight some of these um, passages that I want to talk about. And I think what's really interesting about this chapter um, is the surrounding farms seem to be really terrified of the idea that uh, animalism is going to catch on. And they're uh, quite scared that uh, the animals on their own farms are going to be rising up. So uh, they start putting out these rumours that um, the animals on Animal Farm are actually very poorly treated. And I guess this kind of reflects the anti-communist propaganda that existed after the Russian Revolution uh, in places like the United Kingdom um, and in the US. And of course, a big part of this chapter is uh, the Battle of Cowshed. It goes on for pages and pages. And I think, you know, obviously it represents the, the civil war uh, that was going on in Russia um, after the Russian Revolution. And what I think it shows is the fact that revolutions like this uh, very rarely occur easily. Um, as uh, Snowball says towards the end of this chapter, um, every animal needs to be ready to die for Animal Farm if need be. I think what's interesting about this as well is the characterization of Boxer, that very noble, very good character who um, feels a great deal of remorse when he discovers that he may have killed um, a stable hand. And of course, that kid gets up and runs away in the very next paragraph, basically. This is a really short chapter. How about we go and do some writing? This time, I'd like you to have a go at writing a creative response on this chapter. Napoleon is curiously absent uh, during the Battle of Cowshed. I'd like you to write a speech by Squealer, explaining what he was up to. Take a look at the speech that Squealer gave about the milk in Chapter 3, and try to adopt a similar tone. And that's it for Chapter 4. Hope you had fun thinking about this chapter. We'll catch you next time.